welcome to Nightline again. We're pleased that we could be with you again and, and you can be with us. It's a blessing to know that we have an audience that, that will respond by way of praying and meditating on God with us. And, and we, we have prayer partners, so we want you to call and get your call in. If you have a special need, a special prayer request, by all means, call and get that in. And, of course, we always emphasize this. If you aren't a Christian, by all means, you need to come to the Lord. Now is the time. Now is the accepted time. Tomorrow's not promised. So I'm glad that, uh, that we have this air, the airways here that we can just reach right out to where you are. And whatever your needs are, you can call them in or you can just, uh, just pray right there at home where, where you are. I get a lot of uh, calls from people that tell me that they, they just pray right along with us at home. And that's a blessing. It is. And Happy New Year. Aren't you glad we have another new year on us? And, and it's a blessing. The Lord has spared our lives, given us another chance to honor Him, lift Him up. And I have Sherelle Booker with me. I'm glad to have you, Sherelle. It's my pleasure, Greta. It's getting, it's getting more and more of a pleasure. I'm getting more used to sitting here with you. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's always a pleasure for me to have you. Well, it well, is. Thank you. Your thank blessing. You. And, you know, you just do a lot of good things here at the station that, that you know, we, we appreciate. We appreciate just having somebody like you steady and, and, uh, and that loves the Lord. Oh, yes. Loves the Lord. Yes, without a doubt, yes. Mm. And thank you for that. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm one of those people, when I'm doing something, Greta, I try to give it my all. I know and, that. Uh, I don't try to stand out or try to get a pat on the back, but I appreciate what you just said. Well, bless thank you. Thank you for that. Bless mm -hmm. you. Well, you were every bit of it, more too. Oh, well, <laughs> we you. do appreciate you around here. We sure do. And we're just glad for uh, the, what the Lord's going to arrange for us tonight on the program. You know, when we come here and we have prayer, that's one of the things that's very important to us is to pray before we come on the air because we want the Lord to take the lead here. Yes. Not us, but right. the Lord. You know, He, requ he requires of, of us or requests of us to seek Him first. Exactly. And that is one of the things we do before Nightline. We seek Him first. That's so, right. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the important thing. Yes. It is indeed. And we want to put him first completely in this program tonight and, mm -hmm. and throughout Nightline. So we want you to be a part of it and just worship. Worship with us right there in your home. Let the Lord use you. He wants to use you tonight for whatever needs there may be in your life. He may, he may want you to call the prayer partners and, and share with them something very special that's on your heart. And you can feel at liberty to do that. We have Rayburn Creek with us. This is a singing group that's been with us a, a couple of times already. And, uh, but they bless us every time they come. And here they are now to sing, I won't have to worry anymore. And that's a good theme for us, isn't it? Yes. So welcome, Rayburn Creek.
Thank you so much for that good song. And, you know, I, I like the way they sing it, just putting their hearts in it. And it's a blessing, isn't it? Yeah, it's always nice to hear the children sing. I know, and yeah. won't have to worry anymore. That, that song really says something, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Yes. The time will come when we will we won't have any more worries, any more troubles, any more problems. Yeah, and it makes, a, like I said, it makes a big difference when you hear the children sing it and the children play. Uh, the instruments, it's, it makes it so much more innocent, you know. Mm -hmm, it does. And, um, like I like I to see them, I really do. Mm -hmm. And they're so precious, they really are very special to us. And our scripture this evening is um, Matthew 6, uh, chapter 6 and verse 6. And I'm just going to share that here, and uh, then Sherelle, you can give me some thoughts on it. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into the closet... And when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Now, there are a lot of verses here that talk about prayer right. in this segment here, a lot mm -hmm. of verses. But I was just thinking about this particular one, and, and the fact is that our focus should be on, on prayer, mm -hmm. praying. And especially as we've come into a new year now, it's important that we uh, that we really focus on on the Lord right and give him some time right. some of our time yes well for me personally when it talks about uh, going in your closet for me it's on my drive in to work yeah yeah that's a good and I know a lot of people think you physically have to be behind a door but uh, yeah mm -hmm. and that is in private because it's just me and him it's no one in the car but the two of us and a lot of times I'm asking questions and waiting on an immediate answer. And the thing is, like you say, you pray and um, you let him speak to you in his own way. And you don't That's rush right. him and you don't try to make him answer mm -hmm. the way that you want to. But one thing I like about this um, verse, Greta, and later on in, the, uh, in Matthew 6, it talks about uh, the father having knowing what we have need of, you know, clothes and food oh, sure, and yes. so on and so forth. But we still ask him for that, and we really don't have to. It's almost as if, you know, you're six years old and your, your parents are working. They know you need food and clothing, and a six-year-old wouldn't go and ask his dad for it, that particular thing if his dad is already mm -hmm. supplying that. So there's some things we don't have to ask the Lord. So Yes, he just, he just supplies them, doesn't right. he? Right. But, you know, I, I was thinking about this. We're into a new year now, mm -hmm. and it's so important to really focus on, on prayer. Now, I know we do that a lot of times, and we say that maybe at the beginning of the year, but sometimes mm -hmm. we let it slip. We, we fail to, uh, to really pray like we ought. Mm -hmm. But I think the Lord just, he, he's counting on us to, to just look him in the face, in a sense, you okay. know, and talk to him. Mm -hmm. He wants us just to talk to him. Right. As he is. And I, I'll tell you something um, else about prayer. Like he might have you to pray for someone. And I, I think I've mentioned this before. There have been someone in Hollywood. I, I've never met them. They've never met me. And yet still I, he's commanded me to pray for that person. Oh, and yeah. I, and I'm obedient and I'll pray for that person. And just uh, this morning a name came to me. And I was like, well, Lord, what is this? And he said, just pray. And oh. I just prayed, and it was a female, and I just prayed for that person. And I, and I like when he does little things like that. I just do. Just little things like that in your spirit. That's neat, isn't it? Mm -hmm. what, if, if we can, if we'll walk close enough to him and be uh, listening at all times mm -hmm. for 
him to speak to us in a sense. Right. Because he speaks in a lot of ways. Right. You know, through people and uh, various ways. Mm -hmm. And just bringing, like you said, thoughts into your heart and mind. And that's, that's one of the ways he has of speaking to us. Yes. And so it's just important that we let him have some right away. And especially now that we're in it to another new year. And we don't want to just... Uh, just say, well, I'm going to make a pledge. I'm going to, I'm going to do thus and so. But he wants us to just draw near to him and just be personable mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you are, you are really good at praying for our military men and women, and a lot of times we forget that. And uh, mm -hmm. the Bible suggests that we pray for our people in positions, you know, the presidents and people in Congress, people yeah. overseas that are in position. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, when I'm praying for those people, I also pray for myself and my family members too, that we have wisdom in the decisions that we make. That's right. And sometimes those decisions fall right in line with everything else that's going on um, in the country. And I think if we're all in line with a prayer, that things does happen, they do happen. They do. Yeah, they do happen, yeah. Yeah, and I just, I just want, personally, I just want to focus on the Lord and more than ever in all my life, mm -hmm. I want to draw close to Him and, uh, and just talk to Him right, right out of my heart. And, and I came across some things that, uh, a, a little reading here that, that uh, I, I wanted to share with you, if I find it correctly here. Well, here it is on this. And it's, it's about prayer. It says prayer is so simple. Mm -hmm. You know, just talking to the Lord. That's what we it don't is. have to be fancy with it. We just talk to Him. Talk to Him just from heart to heart. Right. You know, it's just like you and I are talking now. It's, uh, it said it is like prayer is so simple. It is like quietly opening the door and slipping into the very presence of God. Mm -hmm. And there in the stillness, to listen to his voice. We won't do all the talking. Let him talk uh. to us. Listen to his voice and perhaps to petition or only to listen. Mm -hmm. You know, we can talk some and, and let him talk some. Right. It matters not just to be there in his presence, his prayer. Yes. Well, I, That's I, precious, isn't it? Yes, I like to say this. I, I, I like to have a little fun, I like to laugh every now and then and, you know, just have a good time. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the Lord will respond to me and it'll just be funny to me what the, the thing that he may say, you know, and I'll just say, okay, Lord, I got it. I'm going to leave it alone or whatever it is I'm doing. But, yeah, sometimes he'll say things to me that's just humorous. Mm -hmm. And I guess if you're a serious person, maybe you don't get that from him because a, a lot of people to me seem like they, they think that he's just all serious all the time but I think people need a lot of people need to be drawn to God and in, um, in that sense that he's not just all serious and mm -hmm. just you can ha have a break and you can laugh and you can have fun and he will speak to you in a way that is humorous sometimes if that's the way that you you get the message because mm -hmm. he'll say something to me sometimes and I might not get it that way but it, if I laugh I've gotten it <laughs> yeah, I've got it. And there's sometimes uh, he does mm -hmm. uh, let himself be known to us. and But we, at, maybe at that point in time, don't recognize it. But little, after a little bit, we say, I believe that was the Lord talking to me. Uh-huh. You know? Well, one way I try to distinguish that is that I know, particularly if I know it was not my thought, and if it didn't come from the enemy, I know it was the Lord, whatever mm -hmm. the, the uh, voice has spoken to my spirit. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, and I've heard people say, well, he's never spoken to me. I've never heard him audibly, and uh, maybe you haven't, mm -hmm. you know. And like you say, sometimes he'll speak through other people. Oh, mm -hmm. I know, and it's just so important to keep keep a prayer in your heart and, mm -hmm. and on your mind because, um, you know, the fact is that he just wants us to be personable mm -hmm. and just say what we feel. Right. And a lot of times I have to do that. Yeah. I have to say it just like I feel it, but the Lord, I think he, he welcomes that. 
Well, he already knows anyway. You might he as well be already. honest with him. <laughs> but right. it seems as if you're talking tonight about having that personal relationship where it's just between the two of you, like mm -hmm. you say, in your closet and in secret. Right. But a lot of times we think we only pray when, we're, when someone's sick or um, perhaps been in an accident or someone has a uh, financial need or something like that. But like you say, when you're in your closet or driving to work with, with just mm -hmm. him or whatever it may be, that is your time. That's when you get your wisdom. That's true. You know, and, and your or understanding. You may have asked for something, and you and you can get your understanding then too. And so. Oh yes. And you know, sometimes well, you can be driving, Greta, and the Holy Spirit will just get on you, and you just might have to pull over. I've never pulled over, but I have felt like pulling over. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. you just feel like it. Yeah. Well, you might try that sometime okay. because I tell you, it is so precious to know the Lord, uh -huh. and we, we just want to say to our viewing audience that it's it's important important that we make contact with God because he loves us he loves us dearly Raven Creek is singing again for us and they're singing I'll I'll be young again and the other song is mm. be looking for me wow. Raven Creek This old body is getting tired and feeble And I just can't get around Like I did when I was young and fair But with eyes of faith I see A brand new body that's waiting for me I'll be young again when I get
Thank you, Rayburn Creek, and they're from Mountville, South Carolina. So we're pleased to have them come and share the good songs with us. There's something I want to share with you tonight uh, as a special. Uh, many of you know Christina Thompson, who works here on the Nightline. In fact, she is one of the producers, and she does a lot of work getting Nightline together. Her mother, Ms. Angela Bright, mother of Christina Thompson, one of the producers here at TV16, was struck and killed last night while crossing Wade Hampton Boulevard. The accident occurred on Wade Hampton Boulevard near Donnan Road at 8.45 p.m. According to the Greenville County Coroner, Ms. Bright was attempting to cross Wade Hampton Boulevard when she was struck by a vehicle. Ms. Bright was taken to Greenville Memorial Hospital where she was pronounced dead. And Highway Patrol is investigating the accident. Ms. Bright was 55 years old, was disabled and lived on a fixed income and had no savings. And the family is asking for any assistance possible in helping with the cost of the funeral arrangements. Anyone interested in making a donation can call here at TV, uh, the TV station to do so. Now we're all uh, touched deeply by this. Christina Thompson is a very special person for us here, isn't she? Right. She, uh, 
She holds a very important place here at the station. And this has hurt deeply. It's hurt Christina, it's hurt the entire family. Mm -hmm. And this last paragraph here that says Ms. Bright was disabled and lived on a fixed income and had no savings. So the family is asking for any assistance possible in helping with the cost of the funeral arrangements. And I feel like there are people in our audience that would like to help in this situation. So I want you to keep that in mind. And if you will, just ask the Lord what he would have you to do. Right, consult him first. That's right, right. exactly. Because mm -hmm. uh, I talked with Christina and she could, she could hardly talk to me for weeping and uh, mm -hmm. her heart is broken and the others in the family as well. Mm -hmm. So we know that, uh, that you would, would take this interestingly and you would perhaps want to help. And we thank you, thank you uh, uh, in advance for anything that you do to help that precious lady. And uh, we also have with us a very special guest who's come to be with us to share and we appreciate him. And uh, we appreciate uh, Wayne A. Rice, Sr. And uh, you have uh, had an experience with uh, an illness yes. that uh, you want to tell us about tonight. Yes. And uh, I know that this was a long time back, perhaps. Well, no, it wasn't a long time back. How long was it? I was originally diagnosed in 2007 uh, with a form of cancer, multiple myeloma, which is a blood cancer. Multiple myeloma. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and so well, let's just go back to the beginning, perhaps. When did you give your heart to the Lord? Were you a Christian at the time? Yes, yes, at, at an early age, around 12 years old. Around 12? Yes, ma'am. That's when you gave your heart to the Lord? Yes, ma'am. What about that? Yes. And you just invited him in and... Uh, what happened from there? You just followed the Lord and His... Well, well, my, my mother and father at the time, we, of course, I didn't like it, but they, we were always been uh, taken to church every Sunday. Oh, they took and, you to church. Yes. And, you know, just sitting there listening to the sermons year after year, week after week, and then realizing that there's uh, more to life than just, than just living. Sure. And around 12 years old just when was baptized and, and gave my life to the Lord then. Now, I, I hadn't been perfect since then, of course, because none of us are. But, no. uh, but, I, but, I, but I did. It was around 12 years old. I was around 12 Well, you old. have a cousin here that works at the station with us. Yes, Fred. Uh, Fred, yeah. Fred and I uh, reconnected probably about, um, year, about a year ago. Yeah. And we have been very close since then, and he is... He will call, or I will call him, and we will talk about things. We will talk about uh, spiritual things. We will talk about how, how things are going in our lives. And we sort of, we just, we are just strength for each other. And he, it's good to, to, to have someone that's, that's very real like that and someone that's, oh, that really isn't. loves loves the Lord. And he, he's, he's not playing. I mean, he is, he is serious for the Lord. And he will let everyone know that he's serious for the Lord. Yes, and yes. he's a blessing here too. Yes, we he's all a blessing like in my family as well. Yes, we like Fred very yes. much. Well, uh, tell us about your your family. You said that uh, they started out. You you started out for the Lord at a, at a young life. Yes, because they your parents took you to church. It, it took us to church, and not only did they take us to church, we. We, we saw the way that they lived. We, you know, other people can do one thing or say one thing, but the way that they really treat each other, the way that they that treat their kids, difference. the way they treat their neighbors, that's, that tells the real story. And, uh, and I, I remember growing up, gr my father, uh, we were driving down the road coming home, and we would always see this guy that was walking up and down the road and mm -hmm. he would uh, be intoxicated and during the summer he didn't smell that well but any <laughs> but but no matter what time of the year it was my dad would always pick this guy up and give him uh, take him home and he never told me why he did it but then as I got older I, I, I realized that he was showing 
me how to love someone no matter what kind of condition that they were in. And that's the kind of love that, that our family have for each other and for, for others. Well, you know, in this book that you've put out, Why Am I So Happy? Yes. Now that's the title of your book. Yes. Why Am I So Happy? And you say, you say, because I don't want to cry and cancer can't kill my joy. That's right. Now that's a real determination in that, isn't it? It is. In this book, when I picked it up to read it and I thought, yes, I've got to read, I've got to see what he's <laughs> talking about here. Because usually when you, you learn that you have cancer or something of that nature, it just, uh, you know, first of all, you've got to get victory over that thing because it, it just about gets you just to think about it. You're yeah, right. And, and the key word that you stated was, was victory. Once, victory. once I was told that uh, I was, they said that I did have cancer, uh, immediately I claimed victory because I know that as long as I was in Christ, that no matter what the, the paper may say, that I, I still have victory. Even if I lived five years, 10 years, 50 <laughs> years, I still had the victory over, the, over this thing that they call cancer. So that word never, never did scare me, never did bring tears to my eyes. It was that, okay, let's, let's go. It's time to, to fight, time for mm -hmm. the battle. And that was what kind of cancer now? It's uh, multiple myeloma. It's, it's linked in with the, the blood cancers like uh, leukemia, lymphoma, mm -hmm. then myeloma. And only about, about 12 to 15,000 people per year are diagnosed with this form of cancer. Uh, there's no cure for it. The average life expectancy is about four years mm -hmm. uh, after being diagnosed. Well, what did this do for you when you first learned that? Did it? It, uh, it strengthened my walk with, with the Lord. It and, did? and it showed me that what I was going to have to go through, it's not for, not for me. It's for, for someone else. It's for others maybe to, to, to get a little, a little hope, yeah. happiness, and joy that's going through things in their life that, that just happens to them because things are going to happen in our lives and it's how we handle those things mm -hmm. that really defines that how we are. And if we are already in Christ and those things happen to us, we shouldn't, uh, we, we shouldn't let it bother us to the point where we're just distraught because uh, Christ is our strength. And as long as we have him, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we shouldn't uh, just get to the point where we're just devastated. And, and, and it is it's a devastating disease if we if we allow it to be if we, we if we choose for it to be we we can take this we can take that news and say okay I have this, but I also have I also have the Lord I also have oh, yes. have the the, the 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 man and the the, the spirit that uh, that He's put in me to be able to get past this thing. But you know, for the most part, uh, it it the way it really works is when we hear we have something dreadful mm -hmm. like that, it frightens us so to start with until it, our, it's hard to get our faith built up enough to trust. Yeah, it, it does, and you, you, hear the, you hear the word cancer, you hear it so often, and mm -hmm. the first thing that comes to your mind is, you know, the, the pain, the, the, the chemo, what it does financially to you. And, and and all of those things, and and I thought I, I thought of all of those too. It it ran through your mind. It, didn't it, it? did. I, I mean, it really did. But then I also remembered that uh, that God said that He would never leave me nor forsake me, and that He would always be there <laughs> with me even until the end of the world. So I I had to get all those scriptures that I had heard growing up in Sunday school. And all those times when uh, I really wasn't listening, uh, I didn't think I was listening, all those things came back to, to my spirit, and that, that's what strengthened me. Now, now let, let me correct some for, for a person that maybe um, they're diagnosed, and it, and it is, uh, they do have a hard time with it. That doesn't mean that they're not a, a strong Christian. That means that they're just having to deal with it, but in due time, I think that they will come around. Mm -hmm. Well, now, um, do you think that uh, a joyful life is what you apparently began to build up in you, uh, uh, continue to live with, in joy and peace, Yes. right on with it, but do you think that in itself uh, helped you to conquer 
have I, to. I, I've always I've always said mind over mind over matter. Yeah. And uh, when I I had run run a marathon, and that I thought I was running a marathon just uh, because that's something I always wanted to do, but that marathon taught me so much as far as finishing, as far as doing something uh, that the body says that can't be done. Uh, during those miles, during that 15th, 16th, 17th mile, your, your body is breaking down. But the mind is saying, no, you only, you only have six more miles to go. You mm -hmm. only have five more miles to go. So that's the way that I'm looking at this uh, with uh, what they tell me, this, this cancer that they tell me I have. It's, uh, the, it may be on paper that I have this cancer, mm -hmm. but in, in my paper, which is the Bible, it says that uh, I'm healed, and that's the board that I'm, that's, that's the that testimony that I'm using, right. yes. Mm -hmm. Greta, I'd like to interject since sure. uh, Wayne is here. Mm -hmm. uh, predominantly, this particular cancer strikes uh, black males, right? Yes. Just predominantly. Have they yes. figured out why? They're, they hadn't figured out why. Uh, they don't know what causes it. Mm -hmm. It's usually diagnosed around between 65 and 70 year old. Oh wow. And I mm. was diagnosed at uh, 42. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that no, but there's no, uh, they don't know what causes this, this type of cancer. Mm. Well, how did your family respond to this? Now you have three children. Three children. And, uh, and a wife, and, and a your wife, wife is here with you tonight. wife 25 years and three children. Uh, Anthony is uh, 22, Joseph is 19, and Alana is 13. Mm. And how did they respond to uh, when they found out you, you had know, it? They really didn't uh, have a problem with it. They, they, they knew about cancer, but the way that my wife and I handled it, I they saw the calmness in us. There was a secret us, right there. And they were, they were just as, just as calm. And I remember uh, just trying to reassure my oldest son at some point, I don't know what was going on, but I told him, Anthony, I'm going to be okay. And he looked at me and said, oh, I know. I know, I know you're going to be fine. And that was just, uh, that, that, that just did my heart mm -hmm. a, a lot of good, knowing that he already had confidence that, that God was going to take care of us and take care of me in my situation. That's wonderful. Yes. That's wonderful. Yes. Well, you know, I'm sure that uh, they, they felt like uh, uh, they weren't cared, didn't have to carry the burden because you weren't carrying it. You, you mm -hmm. weren't, you were joyful in your heart and in, Yes. in your life and your I'm sure in what you had to say and do uh, they were they were blessed by that they, they were and and in a, in a in a in a weird way I am I'm not saying I was happy that I was not was no I'm sure this, you were happy mm -hmm. but, but I, I I I I am glad that God thought enough of me to to, to have me be able to speak to others about a, a situation that a lot of times is seen as as, uh, as dire, as, as negative, as, as mm -hmm. life threatening, that that I'm giving the, that he's given me the opportunity to, to to speak to others about it. That's good. Yes. Well, if, if this book, I really like this little book, and it mm -hmm. just has so much. Uh, you know, when you think about it, we let things get us down most of the time. If we find out we we have an illness of some sort. It gets us down mentally, sometimes more more than physically, yeah. in some ways. But uh, you just have a. It, you say here, I have a, a challenged place before me, and I choose to live happily with cancer. Mm. This is what I noticed in this book so many times. You say, Why am I so happy? Yes. With cancer, and yet you're happy. Mm -hmm. Right, because the. If you would have the world tell it, I I I, I, sh I shouldn't be, I, I I shouldn't be happy. I shouldn't yeah, be smiling. Yeah, they would. Smiling. The, the world would hope. think otherwise, right? Yes, yes. But again, the world tells that we're not of this world. But I like this statement when you say, "For I know, He shall meet my every need, and my hope lies in heaven. Therefore, I I remain happy." Mm. I, remain I like happy. that. Yes. This disease, they tell me. I have will never kill my joy. That's right, and, and it, it can't touch my joy. Even even when I'm in even when I'm in pain, yeah, I still have still have joy and give God the praise because uh, he he still he still has me in His hand, and I know that. Okay, well, a little bit. Well, we want to tell the folk how they can get your book and okay. and know about how to conquer like this. Okay. This is wonderful. 
Thank you. It's wonderful to have victory over, you know, I hurt when I hear somebody's hurting. <laughs> you know, there's just something about that. Yes. But the fact is uh, we have to look beyond. You know, there was a song we used to sing, look beyond mm -hmm. this world with its sorrows and, and beyond all doubt and fear. And we used to sing that song, but mm -hmm. it's, it's difficult for us in human um, regular actions. So it's hard for us to really know how to do that, but you yes. know how to do it yes, because you did yes. in this yes, book. <laughs> you did good. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to have our, our group to come sing for us again, and here they are singing a song, River of Jordan and Honey in the Rock. That's Raven Creek. So go through the streets and the byways, break the word too many are fused. 
Say to every fallen brother, there's honey in the rock for you. There's honey in the rock, my brother, there's honey in the rock for you. Baby sent for the blood to cover, there's honey in the rock for you. Baby sent for the blood to cover, there's honey in the rock for you. Thank you. They're a talented group, aren't they? Very talented. I know. They can just get right with the instruments and sing, and that's, that's mm -hmm. beautiful, yes. isn't it? All right. You, you have some questions you want to ask them. Well, in your, in, in your book, you know, your testimony is there, and you've got all of these other great things that you've accomplished. So we want people to get your book, and we don't want you to reveal too much. Mm -hmm. But in there, you talk about um, your encounter with an angel or a couple of angels. Yes. Just can you briefly tell us how that, how that was with you? Uh, it was an experience that I will never, never for forget. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, it was... Um, was with two angels and we were moving in an upward motion mm -hmm. and moving, we were moving towards a an area that was just bright illuminating and you could just feel joy mm -hmm. protruding from this place that we were heading towards mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I wanted to keep going and the angels were on both sides, and they were just as high as I could I could see. And, and, mm -hmm. and I stopped, and they kept moving, mm -hmm. and they kept moving. And I was trying to go further because I wanted to get to this place that had this joy and just good feeling. I wanted mm -hmm. to get there, and I was at, I was yelling, I, I, I want to go, I want to go. And then one looked back, like, and I could just hear him say, "You can't handle it." Mm -hmm. In, in your body mm -hmm. and they kept going I kept on trying to go and and they allowed for me to take one more step mm -hmm. and that one step towards this place that was this this exuberate exuberating place mm -hmm. that that was one step too close and that just it just the goodness the joy just just hit me mm -hmm. and I just I just went to the ground and then that's that's yeah. Oh, I could remember. These earthly mm -hmm. bodies just aren't meant to be in heaven, are they? We couldn't handle it. <laughs> we, 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 we could not mm -hmm. handle it. And it was like they said, well, just, just, let, them, just let them see, a, just feel a glimpse of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, was, it was a powerful, powerful, powerful moment in my yeah. life. And just, just a quick statement. Why, why are we here? We're here for others. Okay. We're, 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 a lot of times we think that when things happen to us, uh, it's, it's all about us. Uh, mm -hmm. When we're working, it's all, all about us. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it, we're here to, to love others, to esteem others higher than, than ourselves. Okay. I'll tell you, we're listening to a man that's got, the, you know, you, you hear of people being sick, but the, mm -hmm. having the victory over the disease mm -hmm. is, is rare. You know, you yeah. don't hear that as much. Mm -hmm. And we didn't ask him if he's a preacher. I think he's got some preacher in him too. Uh, yeah. Do you? Are you a preacher? <laughs> no, ma'am, I'm not. No. <laughs> well, you, you're doing some good I think preaching. He's got a little bit in. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing some good preaching. You really are. And how can we get? Uh, you know, if there are people who would like to get a copy of this book. I'm sure because, you know, this is a victory thing, and it mm -hmm. means it means something to to get something to to encourage you, to lift you up instead of uh, mm -hmm. making you feel sad and down. So th this is good. Yes, ma'am, and, and that's what I, I am so glad that the Holy Spirit led me that way to not only help those that may be suffering from mm -hmm. a disease or illness, but for anything that they're going through in life, a, a loss of a job, a loss of a loved one, because we're all going to go through some things in, in our lives. That's and, true. and hopefully uh, uh, someone will get something out of the book that will give them, some, give them hope but most of all, as I stated in there, I hope that if someone doesn't know Jesus, mm -hmm. that they will see something in there oh, and that yes. they will realize that there important. is there is a Savior that, 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 that died for us and, mm -hmm. and, and give their lives to Him. And you would like to see that happen yes. by all means, yes, yes. Well, I know if, if uh, you'd like to get a copy of the book, it's... Um, Post Office Box 171843. Uh, actually, I, I think I saw Spartanburg. the address uh, 
uh, po posted on the uh, on the screen. All right. It's yes. the uh, 112 Woodmont Drive okay. address. Okay, yes, and that's Spartanburg. Spartanburg. Uh, Boiling Springs. Yes, Bo Boiling Springs. Yes, ma'am. This is Spartanburg County. Yeah, that's that's close around, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Or they uh, could call me at the the phone number listed. Well, good. And yes, if it's already out there, well, you can. Uh, I, I know that when people are down, they feel defeated and feel like they, they just can't make it any further. A book like this, uh, Sherelle, a book like this will really encourage you. Right. It really will. I, I, when I read this, I thought, here's a man with cancer, and he's still on top of the whole thing. I mean, you just could keep going. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've known people who've died within three days if, uh, from a report like that or, mm -hmm. or in a short period. And it's like they just completely gave up, and what man said was true. Mm, it was true. What, it was law. So, yeah. And I didn't want him to get too deep into his testimony because I think people should uh, purchase that book. That's right. Mm -hmm. And to be more than a conqueror. That's 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 somewhat that mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. More than a conqueror. We appreciate you coming so much to be with us. I appreciate you having me. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Thank you. We'll have to have you come back sometime. Thank okay? you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> it's a blessing to have you. I want us to go to the Lord in prayer before we close out this hour. But uh, I received this note that Bob Hicks, and most all of us in our viewing audience know Bob Hicks. His wife, Clara, passed away uh, just a few weeks ago. But Bob is in, uh, he's, we're asking for prayer for Bob because I believe this was his son that called in to ask for prayer for his father they had to take him to the hospital and they had to keep him. Uh, the family says, please pray. So we need to remember Bob Hicks, such a precious man. This is, and he needs our prayers. And the family is asking for prayer, so we want to remember, yes, remember let's that. Remember Janine. Let's remember Janine. Janine, yeah. oh yes, yeah. by all means. Janine is our prayer partner. And she would have been here. She loves to come to be a prayer partner. She, she lets the Lord use her. But she's sick tonight. She's not able to be here. She has more, a lot of things on her right now. And we want you to just put Janine on your prayer list and pray especially for her. And we want to take these needs to God in prayer. We have a number of requests that are right here before me. And uh, we want to pray for, and, and also some praise reports. Uh, someone said, a caller said she just called in to say she loves Channel 16. Yeah, well, praise the Lord. And we like that, don't we? Yes. All right. And then uh, here, I, I should have passed these on to you, and you could have been looking at those. But anyhow, we, we know that there's a lot of prayer requests here. We mm -hmm. want to take these needs to God in prayer, and we want to believe Him to answer as he sees fit. And there's so many needs here, mm -hmm. so many needs. People in pain, people without jobs, needing healing. Uh, here's someone that's having a, a problem with nervousness. That's mm -hmm. a daughter that's suffering with nervousness. And someone with um, financial, needing financial help. And here's one husband and wife problems and a, a need for salvation. And here's one for cancer. Ah. So these needs are here. They're right here in this stack. And uh, if you'll share what you have, some of those you have there. Yeah, Sherelle. here's uh, Ruth from Kyle Penn. She's enjoying the singer, singing and the rest of the program. So she's enjoying all, all the right, program. Good. Enjoying your testimony and all. And uh, Carly called in to give praise to God. Uh, said two years ago, their house burned down and today they have a new home. Isn't that wonderful? It's too cold to be outside, oh, Greta. Oh, I'm telling you. Yeah, yes. or, or without a home. But um, like I said, it's just a bunch of praises mm -hmm. and um, needs. And um, oh, here's someone on drugs. Said, they said, please pray. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we'd like to. Oh yes, but well, we have, have a couple. Rescued. Yeah. Couple of minutes here, and we want to take these to the Lord in prayer. If you'll just agree with me in mm -hmm. prayer, precious Lord, we thank you that we can call upon you. And you know how deeply we are hurt. And you know what we feel, but we also know that you're a God that loves us and cares. And we're trusting you now for every need that I hold here in my hand. 
And Lord, we think of the veterans. We think of the, the military. We think of the precious people that are out there giving so much of their lives because they want, to, want so much to serve you and to do something for your, your cause. And we pray, O oh Lord, especially for Christina and yes. her family tonight. Amen. Oh God, Jesus. be with those precious people yes, and comfort Lord. them in this hour yes, when they need you so much. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers tonight yes, and answering every one of these. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh, praise the Lord. He's on, on the giving hand tonight. He loves us. He cares. He cares about everything that's touching us tonight. And I know that there are some hurting people in our viewing audience. And we want more than anything to help you, help you lift that burden by calling on God on your behalf. And we appreciate you joining with us tonight. And there's so much that the Lord wants to do for us if we'll just open our hearts and let him. He's ready. He's willing. Don't go anyplace. Stay with us. We'll be back for more.